is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Good morning and welcome to the Church of Christ Congregation. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I have a few announcements for you today. Um, there will be family breakfast next Sunday. Next drop in crop is on March 15th, and that will go from 6 p.m. to 10 a.m. for all of these factors. The third thing is, during, uh, due to our current water situation, if you don't know what that is, you can ask somebody later. Um, the dinner portion of dinner in the play has been canceled. And the last week, but not the least, we will continue collecting. Items for Susan B. Anthony project. You can find a list on the back of your bulletin or online. Um, and our celebrations this month go to the Susan B. Anthony project. Just a reminder that in order to celebrate, you don't have to donate. All right, we're going to celebrate. celebrating Paul's birthday for about a week now. His son is in front of the house, so we had a nice time with family. I want to celebrate everybody who helped out with the Super Bowl Sunday dinner or luncheon. It was great. Everybody had a good time. I'm hoping the food was delicious. I'm celebrating my Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship, which can be found in, the, in your bulletin. Come in. Feel your feet on the floor. Settle your worries. Take a deep breath. Dust the cobwebs from your ears. Relax the tension in your jaw. For Christ is your ear. God has never stopped seeking us. us. We have been found. Let us worship the God of deep waters. Amen. 
That was absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Beloved in Christ, this is the call to worship. In our scripture passage for today, we will read about Jesus calling Peter to be a disciple. In the story, Peter is in the presence of the divine for quite some time before he realizes it. Jesus crawls into Peter's boat he tells him to head towards deep water. Together they let their nets down, and it is only when the boat threatens to sink due to the extreme abundance of fish that Peter turns to Jesus and truly sees who's in his boat. Sometimes we miss what is right in front of us. But fortunately, Christ so, beloved, join me in the prayer of confession, not out of fear, but out of a desire to see who's right in front of us. And so let us pray. Loving God, you call us by name. You join us in the deep waters of life. You invite us to drop our nets and follow you. 
and yet more often than not, to admit we are like Peter. Over and over again, we stand slack-jawed and surprised to find you in our midst. Forgive us for drowning out your voice with our own. Forgive us for assuming that we can tackle deep waters by ourselves. Forgive us for forgetting that you will never stop climbing into our boat. Turn our hearts, our minds, and our spirits towards you. For you are the Lord our God, and it is in your name we pray. Amen. Beloved, Peter didn't exactly make a good first impression when Jesus got into his boat. He questioned dropping his nets as they hadn't caught any fish at all that night. He was oblivious, oblivious to who Christ was for some time, and once he realized the divinity standing in his boat, he quickly deemed himself unworthy. And even still, Jesus called Peter a disciple and a friend. And so, church family, hear and believe the good news. You can make a thousand bad impressions. You can make every mistake in the book. Roll your eyes and assume that you know better. And still, Christ will forgive you, claim you, and continue to seek your heart. And that is the good news of the gospel. So rest, celebrate. Trust in that. Amen. And please rise for our gathering hymn, number 504, the New Century Hymnal, number 504, You Walk Along Our Shore. <laughs>
Beloved, they say silence is like, sand, is like sandpaper, paper, because it smooths away the edges. It's uncomfortable, but it helps us become better versions of ourselves. And so I invite you to join myself in this time of silence. Lord, I put my headphones in, I walk quickly, I look toward the ground. I create one million barriers of independence, but God still seeks after me. God leans a rainbow over the sky. God sends sun after the rain. God blankets the earth like wildflowers. God allows music to carry and laughter to rise, all so that I might notice. And when I do notice, the unfurling that begins in my soul is slow and holy. And burning, God has been chasing after me all this time. And so, Creator God, you hear everything. You hear the rush of the wind through the trees. You hear a baby's first cry. You hear the crickets chirping, our silent prayers, and laughter around tables. You hear it all. We don't need that same capacity, but we do need to hear your word, O oh God. For we cannot live on bread alone. And so today we pray, give us the ability to truly listen. Give us the ability to listen with our hearts. And may the truths revealed in your scripture today change us. And with hearts full of gratitude, we pray. Amen. Today's first reading is from the Book of Psalms, Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. It can be found on page 465 in the Old Testament section of your Pew Bible. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed, who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lend me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth, or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. Here is our reading. Second reading is a reading from the verses 1 through 11 and can be found on page 54 of your pew Bible. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had got out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, 
the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to burst. So they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were there were astounded at the catch of fish that they had taken. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought all their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Here ends the reading. And please rise for our hymn that can be found in your bulletin, You Sought Me, and it can be found in your bulletin. to be worshiping with you all this cold and snowy morning. It has been a few months since I've seen all you, my friends here in Goshen, and so I'm happy to be welcoming the Lenten season with you all. Now this is a time of preparation, and I hope that you are all prepared and stayed safe and warm through the storm that we had earlier this week. With all the snow on the ground, this week has actually felt a little bit more like winter than usual, so I took the chance on Tuesday when school was canceled to play a little hooky myself 
and go scheme. So I got in a little trouble with my wife, but you know. <laughs> now I know that we are well into 2024, and for most of us, our New Year's resolution is already a distant memory, but I am still clinging on to hope for mine, even though I keep failing. You see, my resolution this year was to spend more time making and strengthening my friendships. But Tuesday, I found myself alone on the top of a mountain. Now, last week in the Christian calendar, we celebrated the Transfiguration, a story about Jesus finding himself on the top of a mountain, except he was surrounded by some friends. And so, beloved, this Lenten season is a time for us to reflect on the, on the God that calls us each by name and reaches out to become part of our lives so that we can have a relationship with God, not just as our creator, but as our friend. And so today we read the story of Jesus calling his first disciples in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus called his apostles friends. And through that friendship, they created a church that we are part of 2,000 years later, and they changed the course of history together forever. Now, it is a friendship that supports us, that encourages us, that loves us, that moves us. This is the type of friendship that Jesus is modeling for us, a friendship that can sustain us through tough, tough and testing times, and help us experience joy throughout our lives. Now, Jesus is a friend that calls us each by name and challenges us to become better versions of ourselves by casting our nets in the deep water. Now, Jesus is also the type of friend who will show up where you work, which isn't always so nice. And so just imagine you were Simon, getting in from a long night of hauling nets and fish, and all of a sudden you see your friend Jesus come walking onto your boat, knowing that he hasn't lifted a finger all day. Now you might be a little annoyed that your friend came to bother you at work, but when Jesus tells Simon to go back out into the deep water and cast his nets out again, even though Simon's arms are exhausted and his legs are heavy, he tells Jesus that because he says so, he will go back out. Now, I personally don't know if I would be a patient with Jesus. I don't know about you. After a long day of work, all I want to do is sit on the couch, watch TV, or maybe play with my son. But Simon is a much better friend than I am, and so he listens to Jesus and cast his net exactly where Jesus tells him to. And so all of a sudden, we know the story, the nets become full of fish and begins breaking, as well as sinking the ship. Simon has to call to his friends, his other partners, the other boats, to come and help out. And soon they began sinking as well. Trusting in the friendship that Jesus offers and provided Simon, gave Simon more of an abundance than he could have ever imagined. He turns to Jesus and tells him he is not worthy of this, that he is a sinful man. But Jesus responds by simply telling him, do not be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Now Jesus invites us to become friends with all the creatures in his creation. He seeks us out each personally and calls us by name to become part of a friendship that can strengthen and sustain us. Now during this Lenten season, one of the traditional Christian practices is to fast from some vice or to give something up for the season. The idea is to sacrifice can bring you closer to the Jesus who is going to the cross but while I was at seminary, I learned it wasn't just about giving something up. It was supposed to be about gaining something new by giving something up, right? So the idea was that if you gave up a vice, you would actually gain a new healthy habit. 
or gain a better relationship with God. Less tweets, less meat, less smoking, all good things. And this is why they call it a practice. Because the, the more you do it, the better you get. And you need practice. And so I liked this reframing of Lent, of this traditional Lenten practice. So this year I figured, why don't I combine my New Year's resolution and my Lenten practice and make strengthening and making friends both. Is that cheating? No. I recently saw on PBS a report that increasingly Americans are struggling to connect for a variety of reasons. They are calling it a friendship recession. Now, whether you're a younger person or an older person, you know it is harder to go out and meet people in our society. Now, part of the reason is because there is a decline in the public spaces that foster these type of connections and friendships. Friendship also takes practice, just like any other habit. And so we need more social interactions and third spaces like churches and libraries in which to connect and spend time with one another. This lack of connection and friendship manifests in the fractures of society as increasingly political polarization and economic disparities create even larger social division. But friendship, just friendship, has benefits to communities that improve mental health, medical outcomes, and even economies. Friendship fosters cooperation and participation within public life and local communities that can provide real resources to those who are struggling or who, or who are voiceless. Friendship can expand our vision for what is possible and give us the imagination for new ways of thinking. But also, friends are just nice to hang out with sometimes when you really need someone, when you're feeling alone. Friendship helps us not just to survive life, but enjoy it. Now the reality is though, and we all know this, people are weird and awkward. They are complex and emotional. It can be much easier to just stay at home and never get involved. And anyone who has ever been to a church committee meeting knows sometimes it can be pretty hard to agree on even the simplest of things. Friendship is messy and complicated, and it involves a bit of risk. But that is a risk that Jesus took on us. Jesus approaches us on his own and calls us to become friends not just with him, but with the rest of his creation. The hymn we sang today tells us that when we begin to doubt our worth, to remind us that we were formed from the earth, the very good creation of our God who seeks us out in love. It is out of this love that Jesus calls us to be friends and to help him on his mission to build the kingdom of God here on earth. And Jesus was God. He could have done all of this on his own if that was the best way. But Jesus takes that risk, takes that gamble on us, and reaches out to us in friendship so that we can have the love and support of God, not just as our creator, but as our friend, and be surrounded by friends. This friendship has a love that transforms us, that brings us closer to God and to each other. And again, this models to us the risks that we should be taking in our friendships. Because yes, we all know in this room that our hearts will be broken by those we love. But if Jesus can embrace a mess like me, like us, then we can embrace one another as well. Now, Jesus wasn't going out into the lake today to recruit followers. He was going to make friends. And this is why our God is so great. He's not looking for nameless followers to make his new religion bigger and more popular. He's going to his friends. He's reaching out to his friends at their work 
at their place of business. He's coming to us and sharing with us the abundance that comes with his love and his friendship. Beloved, we are also invited into this friendship with Jesus. We are invited to flip our friendship recession and become fishers of people so that we can strengthen our communities and ourselves. As we enter into Lent and prepare our hearts for Easter, let us be strengthened by the friends that are all around us. A type of friendship that gives us the endurance to go out into the deep waters. Because this is the type of friendship that Jesus models for us. A friendship where we are never alone, and where we are each called by name. And so, last week, when I got home from skiing all alone, I picked up the phone and I called a friend. And I asked them if they were busy tomorrow for President's Day. So tomorrow I won't be alone on the top of the mountain. I'll be spending the day with one of my friends who makes me know that I am loved. And so while your New Year's resolution may be long forgotten, I invite you to participate in a new Lenten practice of reaching out to your friends. Or if you are feeling particularly holy and blessed, go out and make a new friend. Because this is God's work, to share the love in our lives so that others will feel called by name and know that they are never alone. Let this be the season that you respond to God's call and become fishers of people. Expand your world by becoming more connected to God's creation. And so as winter fades and we enter into spring, let your relationships bloom like the flowers all around us by never being afraid, and becoming fishers of people. Amen.
beloved in Christ, at this time I invite you all to take a deep and spirit-filled breath. To find the ground beneath your feet, to join your heart in prayer with mine. Lord, we come to you this day seeking friendship and fellowship with your holy church, and to feel close to you. We have set aside this precious time to focus on you and your work and hear your call for us. We come to you to worship and to praise you, to hear you speak to us, and to leave our worship just a bit more in the likeness of your Son, Jesus Christ. And so we come to you in mercy to ask that you hear our prayers this morning. Oh God, we thank you for those times where we smiled and laughed, those times of friendship When we for, all, and for the times when we have been less than our best, we give you thanks that you do not and never turn away from us, and that we are never alone. The Bible tells us that when we confess our sins, you are gracious and just to forgive us and help us start our, anew and cast our nets in the deep water. This is a new season and a time to walk by faith and not by sight. And so at this time, we pause in silence, and we invite you to speak out loud the prayer and intentions that are in your hearts and minds today. Lord, when we lift up your holy church, we want this church to be a strong and vital church in your community. We want to be used by you to make a difference in the lives of others. The need for hope, acceptance, and love and compassion this Lenten season is great, and you are the answer to those needs. And so help us to be better friends to those around us, like Jesus was to Simon. Lord, we lift to you our country and its leaders. We ask that you fill our leaders with your spirit of goodwill and friendship, and that they treat others with care and respect. Let us have the imagination for a world that looks so much better and more just and friendlier than the one we have today. We pray that egos and powers be set aside and that wisdom vision, and collaboration prevail. Lord, we pray for the sick, the suffering, the lonely, misguided, or those who are in need of your presence. We ask that you would touch them with your healing, with your guidance, and with your peace. Pray for all those loved ones that we have on our hearts and minds this day. And Lord, for the confidence and joy hope that we find in you, we lift this prayer to you, saying the words that your Son taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, one of the best ways that we can share our friendship is by sharing our resources with one another. And so there are a few ways to give, and so I invite you to do so uh, to hear at this wonderful church.
nation of faith. We believe in a God of abundance, a God who sees our ability where we cannot, and who holds us in hope when we are at the end of our road. We believe in a God who comforts, a God who says, do not be afraid, a God who joins us in life to keep our heart. We believe in a God who invites Number 15, come thou font of every blessing. Number 15. find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within, saying, Take heart, it is I. Be not afraid. You are called, you are blessed, in both your ups and your downs. You always belong to God. So go now in peace, go trusting, that good news. Amen.